Hey guys, I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're studying for the CPA exams and you like the visual learning approach that we take in this video, definitely check out Universal CPA Review's free trial. You can do this by going to www.universalcpareview.com or you can click on the link in the description of this video. From there, you could take a sneak peek at Universal's platform, which includes animated video lectures, study guides, and practice questions with task-based simulations that come with video explanations that walk you through the solution step-by-step, -step, kind of like having a tutor by your side. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to it. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff. At this point, we have a high-level overview as to why we're doing this. Now let's dig into how we're going to do it. At the end of the day, certain items are being included or excluded on the tax return that might not be on the income statement. So that is going to result in a different bottom line amount. Okay, and the reality is, for recognition purposes, the Internal Revenue Code has a different framework and different rules than the FASB does for financial reporting. So if there are differences between the tax return and the income statement, this is what's going to result in what's referred to as a difference. And the difference is thought of as a discrepancy. And the discrepancy can either be considered a permanent difference or a temporary difference. So we know that these differences are these discrepancies between book and tax, fine. So what's the difference between a temporary difference and a permanent difference? Temporary differences will be the only types of differences that will result in a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. Okay, so I repeat. It is only temporary differences that are going to result in DTAs or DTLs. Again, we're going to elaborate more on DTAs and DTLs in just a second, but I wanted to preface with that because it is extremely important to remember. Okay, so temporary differences are going to be considered items of revenue and expenses that will enter pre-tax gap financial income in a period either before or after it is entered in taxable income. So examples can include expenses or losses that are deducted either before or after they have been deducted from book income. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if expenses or losses are getting recognized on the tax return, right, in other words, bringing down the taxable income amount, but they are yet to be recorded as expenses for financial reporting purposes, then this would result in a temporary difference. Okay, so for example, if we are applying the double declining balance method for depreciating a fixed asset on the tax return, but we are applying the straight line method on the income statement, then we're going to take more depreciation in earlier years when applying that declining balance method on the tax return. Okay, but that will result in a temporary difference. Why? Well, at some point, the total depreciation expense will be the same amount, and therefore the difference will eventually become no more. Okay, but there's going to be differences throughout the actual depreciation of the asset. The next way that we can have a temporary difference would be if revenues or gains are included in taxable income either before or after they have been included in financial accounting income, aka the income statement. Okay, so if unearned revenue is recorded as revenue when cash has been received on the tax return, but it is not getting recognized on the income statement until it is earned, then this would result in a temporary difference. Okay, so we're recognizing more revenue today on the tax return when that cash has been received, but eventually that revenue is going to get recognized on the income statement. And it's already been recognized on the tax return, so we're not going to recognize it twice for tax purposes. So therefore, eventually this will reverse. Okay, so that's the most important takeaway, that they will reverse. And it's also crucial to remember that temporary differences will result in a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. Okay, so that was temporary differences. What about permanent differences? Okay, so these differences are only going to get reported on the books. Okay, so only on the income statement that they're going to get reported. But they're not getting reported on the tax return. Okay, so if something is getting reported on the books, but it's never going into the tax return, this difference is never going to get reversed. So it is permanent. All right, so it is not going to result in a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability because it's never getting recognized. Hey guys, I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're studying for the CPA exams and you like the visual learning approach that we take in this video, definitely check out Universal CPA Review's free trial. You can do this by going to www.universalcpareview.com or you can click on the link in the description of this video.
From there, you could take a sneak peek at Universal's platform, which includes animated video lectures, study guides, and practice questions with task-based simulations that come with video explanations that walk you through the solution step-by-step, -step, kind of like having a tutor by your side. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to it. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff. At this point, we have a high-level overview as to why we're doing this. Now let's dig into how we're going to do it. At the end of the day, certain items are being included or excluded on the tax return that might not be on the income statement. So that is going to result in a different bottom line amount. Okay, and the reality is for recognition purposes, the Internal Revenue Code has a different framework and different rules than the FASB does for financial reporting. So if there are differences between the tax return and the income statement, this is what's going to result in what's referred to as a difference. And the difference is thought of as a discrepancy. And the discrepancy can either be considered a permanent difference or a temporary difference. So we know that these differences are these discrepancies between book and tax, fine. So what's the difference between a temporary difference and a permanent difference? Temporary differences will be the only types of differences that will result in a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. Okay, so I repeat. It is only temporary differences that are going to result in DTAs or DTLs. Again, we're going to elaborate more on DTAs and DTLs in just a second, but I wanted to preface with that because it is extremely important to remember. Okay, so temporary differences are going to be considered items of revenue and expenses that will enter pre-tax gap financial income in a period either before or after it is entered in taxable income. So examples can include expenses or losses that are deducted either before or after they have been deducted from book income. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if expenses or losses are getting recognized on the tax return, right, in other words, bringing down the taxable income amount, but they are yet to be recorded as expenses for financial reporting purposes, then this would result in a temporary difference. Okay, so for example, if we are applying the double declining balance method for depreciating a fixed asset on the tax return, but we are applying the straight line method on the income statement, then we're going to take more depreciation in earlier years when applying that declining balance method on the tax return. Okay, but that will result in a temporary difference. Why? Well, at some point, the total depreciation expense will be the same amount, and therefore the difference will eventually become no more. Okay, but there's going to be differences throughout the actual depreciation of the asset. The next way that we can have a temporary difference would be if revenues or gains are included in taxable income either before or after they have been included in financial accounting income, aka the income statement. Okay, so if unearned revenue is recorded as revenue when cash has been received on the tax return, but it is not getting recognized on the income statement until it is earned, then this would result in a temporary difference. Okay, so we're recognizing more revenue today on the tax return when that cash has been received, but eventually that revenue is going to get recognized on the income statement. And it's already been recognized on the tax return, so we're not going to recognize it twice for tax purposes. So therefore, eventually this will reverse. Okay, so that's the most important takeaway, that they will reverse. And it's also crucial to remember that temporary differences will result in a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. Okay, so that was temporary differences. What about permanent differences? Okay, so these differences are only going to get reported on the books. Okay, so only on the income statement that they're going to get reported. But they're not getting reported on the tax return. Okay, so if something is getting reported on the books, but it's never going into the tax return, this difference is never going to get reversed. So it is permanent. All right, so it is not going to result in a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability because it's never getting recognized. Let's take a quick break and catch our breath. Ooh. If you like what you see in this video, well, you're not alone. Okay, many students who studied with Universal CPA Review have found a ton of success. And if you don't believe me, you could take a look at our reviews on Trustpilot. Trustpilot is the most legitimate third-party review site that ensures that our reviews are completely legitimate. Universal CPA Review is not only the best CPA exam study option for visual learners, but it's also the most cost-effective option out there. So if you've already spent thousands of dollars on another CPA Review course, we totally understand, and we want to help you out. So take a look at our free 7-day trial and see if Universal CPA Review is for you. You can start your free trial by going to www.universalcpareview.com 
or you could take a look at the link in the description of this video. Okay, so now let's focus on what it is we can expect to see on some of the multiple choice questions come exam day. So the core elements of income taxes for the FAR exam are based around determining the following. We want to be able to identify temporary versus permanent differences. We want to be able to calculate the current income tax expense. We want to be able to calculate any deferred tax liabilities or deferred tax assets. And we also want to determine what is going straight to the income statement as our income tax expense. Okay, so while there are other types of questions that might be a little bit funky that show up on your exam, this is what they tend to target. So we're going to focus your attention on this and we're going to attack it by building our mental map. Okay, so step one in our mental map is going to be determining any of the temporary and permanent differences. So this ultimately is going to lead to our deferred tax liability or our deferred tax assets, right? We remember permanent differences will never lead to a DTA or a DTL. Okay, so we already touched on the difference between temporary and permanent differences a little bit. But if we notice that there is this discrepancy between the taxable income amount and the amount that is reported as net income on the income statement, then we need to identify the reason for that discrepancy. Was it due to a temporary difference or was it due to a permanent difference? Step two is determining the current income tax expense. Okay, so we're focused on the tax return side, right? So once we calculate taxable income while considering any differences that impact the tax return and the differences that impact the income statement, we're going to apply the necessary tax rate. So let's stop right there. And the reason we're going to stop is because the exam might throw you two different tax rates to consider. And you might be thinking, wait, which tax rate do we apply? Okay, so very frequently will they ask you to use the effective tax rate for calculating the current income tax expense, whereas they're going to generally use the enacted tax rate for calculating the deferred tax liability or the deferred tax asset, right? The amount of liability that we will owe in tax in the future or the tax benefit that we can enjoy in the future. Okay, so when you're thinking the effective tax rate, you're thinking the actual tax rate, right? Today's tax rate. Whereas when we're thinking about the enacted tax rate, you're thinking the future tax rate. Okay, so because we're determining the current income tax expense, which will amount to the tax liability presented on the tax return, we're going to focus on this effective tax rate. So we're going to take all of our gross income and we're going to reduce it by all of our deductible expenses, and that's going to give us our total taxable income. That taxable income will then be multiplied by our current income tax rate right, which is the effective tax rate or the actual tax rate. And if they ask you to calculate the effective tax rate, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to take that tax liability, right, the current income tax expense that we've calculated, and you're going to divide it by the gross income, right, not the taxable income, the gross income before we took any deductions. So that's going to give you the effective tax rate. Okay, so step three is determining our deferred tax liability and our deferred tax asset. So focus back on the temporary differences, right? As we previously mentioned, it is only temporary differences that will result in deferred tax liabilities or deferred tax assets. Okay, so this is how it works. Once we have now determined the temporary differences, we can multiply those by the applicable tax rate to compute the deferred tax asset or the deferred tax liability. So in the previous step, we talked a little bit about the effective tax rate. Now we're going to talk about the enacted tax rate. As we mentioned, the effective tax rate is today's rate, right? The current income tax portion, whereas the deferred portion will use this other rate, which is considered the enacted tax rate. Okay, so this is the enacted rate in future periods. All right, and the reality is the rates are always changing. So once the tax rate is enacted into law for future periods, then this is the rate that will be used to compute the DTA or the DTL. So on the exam, while the sickos at the AICPA will not hesitate to use the complexities within these tax rates to throw you for a loop, they will also very frequently go easy on you within the fact pattern. Okay, so regardless of whether this is a multiple choice question or a task-based simulation, they might imply that the current, aka effective tax rate, and the future tax rate, aka the enacted tax rate, are the same. But just so you all don't pull your hair out, we're going to run through the details of both of these rates. 
All right, but I just want to reiterate, don't get lost in the weeds here because the most important takeaway from this mental map isn't going to be the differences in the rates. What I want you to understand is how the deferred tax liability and how the deferred tax asset is calculated and where it is presented in the financial statements. Okay, so again, this is due to the temporary difference that we have identified in step one. That is getting multiplied by the applicable tax rate and the resulting DTA and DTL are going where? This is going straight to the non-current portion of the balance sheet. Okay, finally, we made it back all the way to the income statement, right? This is the financial reporting exam after all. Shouldn't we care about how the income tax expense is getting reported on the income statement? Who cares about the tax return? So while I goof about that, why the current income tax expense, right, the tax liability that we owe the IRS is important is because it represents the current portion of this ultimate tax expense that is getting reported on the income statement. Okay, so that's the current portion, whereas the DTA or DTL represents the deferred portion. So here's how step four goes. If we have a DTL, right, a deferred tax liability, we're going to take the sum of the current tax expense and the DTL to calculate our net income tax expense. Okay, so if we have a DTL, we're adding this. If we have a DTA, right, a deferred tax asset, we're going to subtract that DTA from that current income tax expense. Okay, so again, the current income tax expense minus the deferred tax asset would give us that income tax expense on the income statement. Never, ever, ever take the total net income amount and multiply it by any tax rate. I promise you'll get it wrong if you do it this way. Stick to these four steps and you're going to get this right.